Look at this. Look at this. Watch this one splash up, huh? Maybe. You never know. She moved that way a little bit. God, I can't believe it this morning. So you went to Carmel, huh? Nice. Such a beautiful place, and, but the Mimi's I call them here. The dog I call I call the dogs on the leash. I call them friendship slaves. <laughs> it's so mean, but the Mimi's, you know, most of them aren't from here. But the literature and the God, how can you not catch it? God, look at this this morning. The Padres, right? Yeah, the Padres. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, uh, with the Yeah, the breakers. <laughs> well, see, my brother and my sisters, they went to PG. So they were breakers. I was Padre. So that was a... Nice. <laughs> nice. So, so, I'll have a lot of hope for your generation. Yeah, I do too. We well, are not us. Well, you're going to have to. Yeah, you got no choice. Look what we handed you. Oh, we handed you debt and a poisoned environment. Here, bye. We're checking out. See you guys. I think they have. I mean, look at this. Look at that. We're going to get wet, maybe, huh? She shifted just now. Oh, look at this. No, I have great hope. She's about last. You're never going to kill Monterey Bay all the way. The rest of the ocean. Oh, look at this. Holy cow, look at this. <laughs> it is amazing. You're local here, you know how special this is. You just don't see this. And this has been going on for a freaking day and a half. Well, in the big, yeah. They said it's going to be all week, huh? I was going to say, I know it's going to be a storm, but I know the current is really like crazy. Well, you know, I'll tell you how crazy it is. I, I posted them yesterday at Lover's Point. I've been trying to get way out there at noon on Sunday. I got the furthest I've been out there in two years. She just calmed and pulled way back. And so I got some. Oh, 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 oh. I hope I got it. It is crazy. It's grand. So I'm like, what? Maybe she's just not going to happen. Then I could hear it in my room. That, I'm like, yesterday morning, I'm like, oh my God. And so I got up at five because I knew we have six. And I stand on the sidewalk on the other side right up there. And I got a mermaid shower on the other side of the road right then. And that was at Lover's Point up over the seawall. Right then, I'm like, oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I drive by Lover's Point. They're sand is The biggest was down there. And it was clear up in the people's yards. But it was dark. So I couldn't get no good footage. I'm a big visual genre guy. That's why I use the video camera, not the snap camera. Because I'm more about the sound. I mean, it's the visual is what it is, especially today. But the visual without the sound doesn't do it justice. So I, I'm a big one that, I, I'm one of these guys that change it. I want to change all these California names, including Carmel Padres. Oh, yeah. You know, think of who's buried right across the street from the high school. Father Fresco, line up the natives and shoot them and put them in the trench at the yeah. thing. But it's tradition now. Yeah, but not all traditions. So, I don't even call these names by the surfers' names or the nervers, you know, the Asilomar, Spanish. I don't call them that. I don't even like the word Monterey Bay. I call it the peninsula. <laughs> I'm one of those. Yeah, I just I just call it the peninsula. Or the, or the bay, or Monterey Bay. My line is they tried to turn her into a cliche. Good luck with that. At the aquarium, fifty dollars. Oh, it's outrageous. Remember what? You're too young to remember when they built it. It's not that long ago. You're probably born in that era. So in the '80s, when they built it, people here went psychotic when they built it. They said you're gonna turn Monterey into a tourist trap. You think they were right? <laughs> It's 
disgusting. There's nothing for locals to say. We went down to the old bar that I've been going in my whole life the other night because we wanted to do a shot of uh, Chula Vista lemons and celebrate the initiative, me and another guy. I shot a video of it. And so I walk in there, and there's a girl I don't know. I know a lot of people there, and I'm like, give me a shot of tequila, good tequila, just the cheap good tequila. Yeah. And so I just had a shot of tequila with the Chula Vista, I call it PB to PG, <laughs> turning Chula Vista uh, lemons into what I call PB sun, margarita. And a PB margarita is nothing but straight tequila and a squeeze of lemon. So she adds me the bill, $7 for a shot of tequila. I'm like, really? Yeah. That's Cannery Row, right? <laughs> it's sad is what it is. Yeah, it really is. It's like, I'm working there too. People I've known that have worked on Cannery Row for Oh, I can see why. That's, I always uh, upload my videos because I have good Wi-Fi at the Starbucks there. Right. Because, because that's the only good they're good for is they have good, they're the only place that has good Wi-Fi, which, the Starbucks is right there in the old building, which is half of it's the cannery, the other half's the whorehouse. And so there's a picture of Steinbeck in there, rightfully so. But right across from Doc Ricketts, you know, Doc Ricketts uh, building's still there. It's the little brown one next to the train. That's his thing. And so the old man's still alive and he's protecting the shit out of it. There's one of that group still around. And they want it. And I'm like, they're going to turn it into a museum. I'll mark my word. He says, over my dead body. I says, you don't live forever. And so right across the street, they have a statue, and, they, and it's the Stanford Aquarium, calling themselves the real Marine Bosch, because you know what they call Doc Ricketts. They called him the poacher. They hated it. He had no college degree. I'm like, okay, I don't see you guys. Stanford pricks. Is anybody named? What's the name of this all the way down? It's called the Ed Ricketts. <laughs> he was the greatest, but, you know. He had no college degree, but it's the same scenario now as it was then. That's what he said about him then. Oh, look at this. We're going to get a mermaid bath. <laughs> well, keep up your good work. You know, you, I love the youth here. So I'm head of a group in San Diego we're calling the Baby Wolves of San Diego. And so my theory is this. The youth, you're born and raised here. You go to school here. How do you live here? Because they push rent to so high. God, it's it's see, see, see? Yeah. It's bullshit. And so we're losing all our beautiful youth. The coastal community. Same in San Diego, all over yeah. the coastal communities. It's not fair because you're you know, you're serving coffee. You know, make our beds, wash our oh, no, that's what we do to the Mexican people around here, make our beds. You guys are serving food and serving coffee yeah. to us selfish baby boomers. Yeah, I was three three years as a barista out of Hotel, which is what I'm doing now, and I'm also working in a sushi place as a server. Well, as a dishwasher. Sushi, think about that. So, serving. But, uh, yeah, it's. Didn't we buy you a car? <laughs> That's what well, they'll say. I've got a good car, my mom, but I'm not with that one. I'm on loan. See? <laughs> See? See? But, what do you do? Live with mom till you're 40? No. So you can't. I couldn't. Not so, not what I, my proposal is this, and I propose this in San Diego, and we're getting there, we're getting there. People of your generation that grew up in these places, the McMansion tax, anybody who builds a second home, anybody that comes in, Airbnb, anybody that's on vacation, anybody that stays in a room, we have a big tax, 100% tax on second homes for the Michiganers. And so all the money goes to your generation and pays your rent. All of it. And so it's, people used to think I was crazy in San Diego about that. But they got the thing through San Diego County, no Airbnbs, they banned them. This year, of course, they're suing. Will it hold up? I don't know. But it's, look, I mean, any community. It drives us locals out, you know. That's it. And it's so bad. I have beautiful daughters. They've had to flee their community. They, I mean, Ashley lives in Italy, you know. And so, and, it, you know, I guess some good things can happen, but come on. It's still late. You, you went to Carmel freaking high school. Yeah, it's, it's, elementary. Yeah, I went there elementary school, middle school, high school. So, hey. Carmel was my hometown. So, so also leave. You know, go to Montana. Go to what? I heard I there's good jobs in Dakota. North Dakota at 60 below. See, that's my problem. They're insane. It's because I grew up here. It's so hard to be like You can't leave. It's crazy. 
You can't leave. I'm used to going to sleep It'll kill you. The ocean lake. It'll yes, kill you to leave. I can't imagine. I was just talking to some young I'm guys. Travel. I just don't know if I could live. Yeah, but you're going to come home. Yeah. I just talked to some young guys. They did the same thing. Uh, they One of them was a football player from here. At, I believe he played at uh, PG yeah. or Carmel. They both have great and he, football. Yeah, they got great football. In fact, I got a, uh, I've got a Carmel, the shoe game. I have one of those shirts I wear around. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> and uh, he went on a football scholarship to Auburn, and his brother went to uh, FSU, Florida State. I was talking to them yesterday, and they're like, worst thing we ever did, we tried to move there because we couldn't afford there. Yeah. He says, I was almost crying every day. He says, I came home. He says, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm not leaving this time. <laughs> he says, I'm not leaving this time. He says, I don't care if I have to sleep, you know, and so that's what needs to happen here. Your generation needs to demand it. Yeah. Because. We grew up here. I mean, I feel like some of us think we're entitled to this area, too. Absolutely. You're native. Yeah. You're native. You're native. You should have first call every time. So. It's crazy because the rent, when I remember my mom and my family could live in Carmel and it was affordable. Like, somewhat. Yeah, big time. They could both work steady jobs and support a family in Carmel. And then it was like, okay, we might have to do Carmel Valley or like PG or maybe like Monterey, like just a little farther. Like we still stay in Carmel for a while. And then my mom and I, when I got to school, we found a really great apartment place that was decently priced. And then years would buy spike, 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 spike. Went nuts. Oh, so much. It was crazy. It was so crazy. So by the time I got out of school, it was like, all right, time to find a place. This is insane. <laughs> it's, it's not fair. It's just, it's really... And it's not getting that way all over the United States, even in Utah where I'm at now. That's And so it's even getting that way there. And so Carmel Chris, who's there, the, bio, the freelance, he's a genius here. He He's my age. He went to Carmel Elementary. His wife, who, you know where they're living. They got four shots. They live in Castroville. Yeah, it's so affordable in Castroville. Castroville's a gem. Oh, it's more Mexico than Mexico. <laughs> if you like Mexico, because... It's grand. I love it out there, but it's all, it's 100% Mexico. It's Veracruz because the pickers come from Veracruz. I stay with It's great. But you still got to commute into the city, and that commute's a nightmare. Oh, gosh. It is a nightmare here now. Just when I lived in Marina, getting here, getting, when I worked in Carmel, getting to Marina and Carmel. Look morning. what's happened to Marina. Yeah. I mean, nobody went to Marina. Everybody's like, what, what, what are you doing in Marina? Like, I'm like, no, everybody lives in Marina. Affordable. Every person I talk to your age here, all over live in Marina. I tell everybody, well, it's the economy. No, it's the ecology, stupid. Oh, I love it. Marina's nice. Yeah. And it's old school. I get a Steinbeck vibe out there big time. Yeah. Well, keep up your good work. I'll post this video and I'll, uh, I'll talk about this because I'm a big, these people that are all here and they'll tell you and then you get talked to, there's none of them from here. And so, you know, I've been on the coastal community my whole life. You know, I'm a PB guy in San Diego, but I've been here working the coast. And, you know, I respect, you know, because I'm not a local, I'm not a native, but I respect them, yeah. you know, and, but I'm native to the sea. I also like to welcome people here because it's so beautiful. It's just... Have some respect. Yeah. Exactly. And so <laughs> this, the, the rich people is like up on the point, which... Uh, Pebble Beach, I call them the Pebble Beach Nazis. <laughs> but anyway, none of them are from here. None of them are from here. None of them are from here. And so, you know what, in a second and third homes. And I'm like, well, you can come visit it. Tear down a house, build a house, you know, Airbnbs, you know, renter units, uh-uh. Not in PG. PG's, by the way, Pacific Grove, but I'm at every single coastal community. It truly is the last. It really is the last coastal freaking. It, I, for real. It is the last one. The, I'm for real. I'm not kidding because they don't know about it because you can't just get off the one and there it is. Yeah. So it's like, so it's the thing with Carvel is it's like right off the highway. <laughs> well, in but. San Diego, the 100th monkey woke up down there. I have a little place yeah, that I, I stay uh, right there on the road between uh, on Turquoise. Where I stay between PB and Bohan. It was kind of a little secret gem. Nobody knew about it. Oh, they know now. Yeah, 68 million 
tourists in San Diego this year, 68 million.